Hey folks, welcome to Adobe's Learn From The Pro series. I'm Jordi from the Cinecam YouTube channel, and in this video, we're going to tackle After Effects. Now, it might be overwhelming at first, but trust me, after this video, you'll think by yourself, is it that easy? So let's fire up After Effects, and the first thing that you'll be greeted with is the welcome screen. From here, you can open up a recent project, and on the left-hand side, we can start a new project, or open one that might not be in the recent project list. There's also an interesting tab where you can find the whole bunch of tutorials, but I suggest you check that out after you've got the basic from this video. So for now, let's click on new project and keep in mind After Effects does not ask us to save the project. So I recommend to immediately do that. From the menu on top, locate file and from here you get a whole bunch of options like starting a new project and whatnot, but also to save our current one. So let's choose a destination and give the project a name. Hit save. Now just like any other Adobe app, After Effects is made out of different windows, which are these panels right here. You can even see a blue outline when you select one. And again, from the menu on top, choose Window. Here you can see all the available panels. The ones that are checked are currently active. So whenever you're looking for something, you can always find it back in here. Each panel gives a specific functionality, like the project panel in which we gather all of our footage and assets. So let's import something. We can easily do that by double clicking in this area and browse to a media file. Or you can also just drag and drop it in here from your Explorer or Finder. Important is to always stay organized. So let's put these video files into a folder. Now with one selected, hit the return key to change the name. Something else I recommend to do to stay organized. Now we're gonna need a composition. This is kind of like the timeline. See it as a sequence in Premiere Pro. To create one, click this button down here and from the pop-up, we need to enter a name and define the resolution, frame rate and all of that for the composition. Now what's different from Premiere Pro is that we need to set the duration of the composition as well. But if we press okay, we can always right click that comp from the project window and then choose composition settings and change it afterwards. So nothing is set in stone. After we've got a comp, it's opened in the timeline window and we can add footage to here. In the composition window, we can then view the playback. Now one thing you'll notice is that playback might not be as smooth as in Premiere. That is because After Effects renders your video to your memory. Once you're going to work with effects and multiple layers, you'll actually be thankful for that. And speaking of effects here on the right side, we can find back the effects and presets library. We can browse through the different folders or search for something specific. Let's search for Mercury and drag the CC Mr. Mercury effect onto the clip. Automatically on the left side, the effects controls window became active. If you have your clip selected, you'll see a list of all the applied effects in here. We can change their properties, toggle the effect on or off with the FX button, or simply delete it if we don't want it anymore. Finally, we have the toolbar on top, which allows us to select certain tools like creating a shape, a text, or the brush, or whatnot. And on the left-hand side, we have the zoom tool, but I suggest to simply just use your mouse. We can scroll to zoom in or out to comp view, or we can press and hold the scroll button to move around. Alternatively, you can hold down the space bar and just then drag around. So these are going to be your most important windows, and if you like, you can just drag them around, dock them somewhere else, and create a workspace that suits you the best. Now don't worry if you ever close something or get your whole workspace messed up. From the window menu, you can always go to the workspaces and then on the bottom, reset workspace to the safe layout. And you can also save your custom workspace right here, by the way. All right, let's check out the timeline because there's a lot going on in here. After Effects is layer based, so that's why your clips are so small, but that's a good thing because your comp is going to pile up with many layers pretty quick. On the left side, we can toggle the view for each layer and this little arrow expands the layer properties. It's gonna give you the standard transform properties like the position and scale, which we can also change by simply dragging the clip around, scaling it in the comp. If we add an effect to this clip, like the CC Mr. Mercury, it'll also be shown in here. These are the same properties as we saw in the effects controls window. But in the timeline, we can see our keyframes when we start to animate. Let's quickly create a simple animation with the position property. Drag the video to one side of the canvas and then choose where you want the animation to start on the timeline. Timeline. Then click on the stopwatch icon next to the property that you want to animate and that's going to create a keyframe. This keyframe holds the current position. Now let's move forward in time. We can change the position from the value right here, or again, simply drag the clip to a different spot. Now since the position has changed automatically, a new keyframe has been created, which holds the new position value. Playing this back, you can see that we've created our first animation. Good job. 
Now moving these keyframes further apart makes the animation go slower, it takes more time to go from point A to point B, and when bringing these closer together we give the animation less time to go from A to B, so it goes faster. Now to remove all keyframes we can click on the stopwatch again. Right click on a property allows us to reset the value back to default, or you can also see a reset option for the entire transform group as well. Now let's explore some more options for the layers. There's a whole bunch of toggles right right here on the right, and these toggle a certain behavior of the layer, like should it have motion blur or should it be a 3D layer. But it doesn't stop there, if you right click on the columns, you can choose to see even more options, and the modes is something that I do recommend to keep on. Modes basically allow us to blend the current layer, if you're working with Photoshop or Premiere this probably sounds familiar. Now to better demonstrate I'm going to drag that second clip I imported into the timeline, it's a lens flare on a black background, so we can can't really see our initial video anymore because this clip plays on top. But if we go to the blending menu we can choose something like screen, which is going to remove the darks and only show the bright areas. So now it seems like this lens flare is part of the shot. Definitely play around with these blend modes as every one of these does something different. Now we're starting to get the hang of it, right? After Effects is so much fun once you understand these basics, so definitely don't give up too quick. Every new skill is a challenge at the beginning and if you're like me, you like changing challenges, so let's explore text and graphics now. From the toolbar on top, select the text tool, and then simply click in the composition canvas and start typing your text. Taking back the select tool then allows us to move the text around or scale it. But of course there are more text options. Going to the window menu, you want to make sure to enable a line, character and paragraph. I suggest to dock these windows together so that you can access them from the tabs. When working with text you'll be using these three windows most of the time. Align helps us to align the text in the comp, for instance clicking these two will align the text in the center. The paragraph window gives us some more options to align the text within the text fields. And with the other options we can further add margins and whatnot. And finally from the character window we can stylize the text. Choose a font, a color and all of that. The one important thing to mention though is that you you can also select a part of your text and give that a specific styling, so you don't have to create a new text layer for that every time. And just like we've seen before, the transform properties can be found back in the text layer itself, which has been created automatically. This time we also get some specific text properties, and if you'd like to have more properties, click on the animate menu. Selecting one of these, such as tracking, will add that to the text properties. We can now animate the tracking amount by enabling the stopwatch, then go forward in time and change the value to 10. This animates the letter spacing, which looks really cool and cinematic. So definitely explore that animate menu for different properties that you can also create animations with. Now with text also comes graphics. So back to that toolbar, we also have a shape tool. If you click and hold, we can find back multiple shapes. Or you can also choose to go for a custom path and select a pen tool. But for now, let's stick with the rectangle. Very important now is that you don't have any layers selected. If you do, you'll create a mask instead. Now, we'll get into that into a moment. Having nothing selected will create a rectangle shape if you click and drag. In the toolbar you can further choose a fill color, or if you click on fill itself we can make it transparent as well. And the same goes for the stroke, only here we also get a stroke thickness option. Now these options can be found back within the layer properties, so it really comes down to where you prefer to work. And just like with the text layer, this shape can have extra properties as well by clicking on the add button. Let's choose trim path this time. Expand the property and as you can see this allows us to trim the paths. Really cool for animations. So let's do that. Set the start to 100%, then enable the stopwatch, go forward in time and change the value to 0 to reveal the paths. Now playing this back creates a beautiful animated rectangle around the text. You know what would be really cool to create a vignette in this video? Now there are different ways to do that, there's even an effect for that in the effects and presets window, but we're gonna do it a little bit different in a way that we can learn about solids and masking. You know, doing it more complicated is sometimes more exciting, isn't it? Alright, I want to start off by creating a solid. We can either go to the menu, layer, and from here choose new. Or we can click in an empty space in the timeline and then find new. From there we can create a whole bunch of new layers, like a camera tool for if you're working in a 3D space or an adjustment layer. And here's the solid, so let's pick that one. We can give that solid a name and even choose the resolution, which oftentimes is going to be the same as your composition. And finally pick a color. For a vignette we're going to keep that at black and then hit OK to add it to the timeline. Now interesting is that a solid is an actual object, we can find it back in the project window now. Unlike a 
text layer which doesn't appear in here. This time we keep the black solid selected and go to the toolbar to either pick the shape or the pen tool. Let's go for the pen tool this time. Click on the solid to create a first point. Then click somewhere else to connect them together and create a path. You can also click and drag to add curves. So let's continue, go all the way around and close the path. We've now cut out a piece from the solid. We can always add new points on the path or select any individual ones to move them around. The levers allow us to change the curvature of the rounded edges. And to remove a point, hold down Ctrl or Command and then click on a point. So that's the basics of masking. And again, this works the same as in Photoshop shop or many other of the Adobe apps. That's a nice thing actually, many of these tools are gonna be familiar. Now a vignette is not dark on the inside but around the edges, so let's expand the solid properties and find back the mask. Here's a toggle to invert the mask, so let's do that. It's already starting to look more like a vignette but it can be better. There's also a feather option to get rid of the hard edges. So for a vignette we can increase that a lot, perhaps we need to move the mask points a little bit more outside, that way the vignette sits nicely around the edge. And if the edges are still too dark, we can find the opacity property back under transform. Simply decrease that a little bit. All right, let's have a look at the before and after. Remember that view toggle next to the layer? Well, that's gonna be useful now to quickly look at the comp with or without the vignettes. And did you know that you just learned the basics of After Effects? And that's right, you've already gone through the fundamentals, so give yourself a pat on the shoulder. And since you've been sticking around for so long, you're probably eager to learn more advanced tricks. So let's do do that. I'm gonna take that same clip that we've been working with before and drag that into the composition icon. That will automatically create a new composition with the exact same settings as the clip. So that's the resolution, frame rate, and duration. I'm gonna browse to an image of an arrow. This is an illustrator vector file and just drag that directly into my comp. It's pretty small so let's increase the scale but Oh no, the quality looks pretty bad now. But hold on, this is an Illustrator vector file, we should be able to scale it up as much as we want. Well, currently After Effects doesn't see it as a vector, it sees it as a normal image file. Next to the arrow layer, there's a source toggle, basically saying to After Effects, hey, look at the source of this image. It's a vector and boom, we've got sharp edges. All right, let's rotate and position it so that it points towards the woman standing on the cliff. And perhaps I'd like to change the color of the arrow. It's not a shape, so we'll have to work with an effect for that. Search for fill and drag that to the arrow. From the effects controls, we can make it yellow, for instance. Now, I like this arrow to stick to the same point. There's a camera shake going on, so the arrow doesn't really stay at the right position. We're gonna have to do a motion tracking first. Head over to the menu on top, choose window, and then track. Her. To make the controls active, you need to select the layer that you want to track the movement from. So that's gonna be the video clip. We have a bunch of different tracking options, but we're gonna choose track motion. Now we can choose to only track the position, but we can also go for the rotation and scale. For now, let's keep it simple and only work with the position. Make sure that you're at the beginning of the timeline before you get started. Then we can take the track point and move it to another position. I'd like to make mine a little bit bigger from the start so that it's easier to handle. And I'm going to place it on the tip of this rock. The inner rectangle defines the point that you want to track. So I'll make that smaller. The outer rectangle is a search area. If you have lots of motion that might need to be bigger. For a gentle handheld motion like this, I'm just gonna make it small. We can now go back to the tracker window and use one of the analyze keys to start the tracking. You can track frame by frame or simply hit play. Now while the tracking is going on, keep an eye out that the tracker point stays on the right position. If it doesn't, you need to click stop and readjust. When the tracking is done, I'm going to right click in my timeline to create a new null object. This is a nothing layer, it doesn't do anything but we can use it to store the tracking in. So before we hit apply, first click on edit target and choose the null layer. Then hit ok and now we can click apply. Do this for both x and y and then hit ok. When we now expand the properties of the null, you'll see that the position has automatically been animated and sticks to the top of the cliff. But the arrow doesn't yet. Well, going back to the layers, First, right click in the columns and make sure that parent and link is active. You'll find this little pick whip tool now. And with that, we can link the arrow to the null. And it's going to take over the animation. And when playing back the video now, the arrow does follow the camera movements. And with that, you've not only learned the basics, but also how to motion track in Adobe After Effects. Thank you so much for watching and definitely check out the other tutorials and the Adobe's Learn from the Pro series. Stay creative.